Hello. So, you've decided you want to commission painting. Why might you want to commission painting? Well, the usual reasons are you've just moved house. You've got a blank wall, or you may not have moved house and you've still got a blank wall. You've maybe had a wall that's sitting there blank for a number of years when you've been thinking about, oh, I should put a piece of artwork there. Uh, it may be that your friend has moved house, or sometimes it's because you've got friends for whom it is difficult to buy gifts and they're very good friends and you'd like to get them something nice and special. Often people do it because they want to commemorate something uh, or give it to somebody on an anniversary or an important day for them. These are all the sorts of reasons you could be wanting to get a piece of commissioned or a custom artwork um, and when you do make that decision obviously you're going to be looking around to get something that fits with the aesthetic where you want to put it um, and also with your own idea of what uh, the kind of artwork is usually that you like um, and if you know your friends very well or it might be a relative the sorts of things that they like so first thing is obviously to choose your artist um, you want to make sure that whoever it is actually produces the kinds of things you're looking for you may already have an artist that you uh, know and love if so you're going to be usually um, talking to a more established artist. They could be at the higher end of the price range. Art can vary a lot in price. Um, and most of the time, what you're paying for when you pay a bit more is the fact that the person uh, has a body of work, a recognised style, um, may be represented by a gallery. When you are choosing somebody who's more established, you've lowered your risk in one sense, but you pay for that because you are paying for their known um, delivery time, known quality of work, experience, knowledge of materials, uh, the relationships that they have, and usually the fact that there's their signature at the bottom, which means that it may have a little bit of um, wow factor uh, or value associated with it. Um, if you don't have the budget for a multi-thousand dollar piece of work, then you'll be looking at uh, artists who you can still find their work, um, if you are thinking of commissioning a piece of art, it's usually best to go with someone who has at least a body of work that you can see, someone who's got a, a profile, someone who's got a website where you can see not just uh, the work that they've done, but the kind of pricing that they're used to. Make sure that the style is something that you like. Make sure that the size is something that actually makes sense. Many artists produce beautiful work, um, but are specifically focusing on either very large scale work because they're interested in appearing in galleries and doing exhibitions or perhaps a very small scale work where they're um, for different reasons trying to produce uh, nice pieces which are beautiful but may not fit the space that you're actually looking for. Uh, if you're getting your first piece of commissioned artwork you probably don't want to go for huge scale and you probably don't want to go for something that's too micro either um, because uh, it's a bit of a commitment and you want to get something that has a bit of wow factor and obviously if you can afford it then uh, then a piece of uh, at least the kind of size of a or close to a tv screen something like that um a centerpiece piece is, is probably what you know look at look for doing um so once you've uh, chosen an artist or or uh, come to a conclusion that you'd like to uh, work with an artist you want to make sure that they actually do accept commissions. Some are too busy to do that. Some have waiting lists, um, lucky them. And uh, that might mean that they actually you know, can't actually manage to do that because they're already expected by certain galleries to be producing a certain amount of work on a certain theme. And what you need to do is get on that gallery's mailing list and get a piece either ahead of or at the launch. So if you're in that enviable position of being the kind of person that collects that kind of art, then um then great and if you happen to get to know the artist you might be able to get a commission that way but it's unlikely you'll be able to do it just by approaching them so find an artist look at the website look at their prices try and make sure that they do commissions um then you get into the process of actually engaging to uh get the piece of art now whoever you're working with they're going to want to please you and make sure that you uh either come back yourself to get more or tell your friends about it because nobody wants to do a commissioned piece of work that doesn't work for them. They're putting their brand on the line and that artist is taking a little bit of a risk by producing something to order that you want 
rather than producing something that just represents their own view of whatever the aesthetic or the theme or the, the message or whatever they want to respond to at the time. So bear that in mind and make sure that you get a good vibe of the artist that you're talking to. Um, and if you connect and you can make clear what it is you want and they are clearly asking the right questions and showing some interest, then that's a good basis uh, to continue on. They will want to know a certain number of things, um, what they're going to get to work from, what kind of art you want, is it uh, figurative, is it abstract, uh, will it have key figures in it, will it be in fact a portrait. Uh, these are the sorts of things that can make a difference to the time, uh, the level of research, the number of studies that might need to be done before the artwork actually starts. And then you want to understand what that artist's process is going to be in order to get from a nice conversation at the beginning to delivering you the piece of artwork that you want. So with any luck, it's an experienced commission artist who actually knows what the process uh, should be for both of you. And that minimizes risk on both sides of just misunderstanding what's going to go on. So the things that um, you might want to consider are the artist will probably ask for deposit. The reason they ask for deposit is because if an artist accepts a whole lot of work without deposits, then there's really no risk on any of the buyers saying, actually, I don't want that. An artist has to buy the materials. Often the canvas is quite expensive um, and their work and their work studying before they even do the, the painting. So it's so usually between 25 and 50% of the cost is asked for up front, or maybe over a series of milestones. Uh, milestones is a good way of doing it. And that way, both sides are minimizing their commitment um, before finally the total cost of the painting is paid for on delivery. Um, you may, if it's an expensive piece of artwork, you may even uh, work that out in a contract that you both sign with clear milestones, a deadline, or at least a targeted time frame. Um, and everybody then knows what am I paying for? What do I get at that stage? And you have a full understanding of what the artist will and won't accept as interventions along the way. Um, a good commission artist will uh, check in with you at a few stages along the painting. Um, but that check-in is usually um, agreed up front. When will the check-in happen? What changes will be allowed? Uh, what sorts of things um, constitute minor and major changes. And again, a good commission artist will explain all of that to you at the beginning. Um, composition is something it could be a major change. Lighting effects in a painting, if you, know, you want the light to come from this side or this side, that can make a huge difference to uh, the painting and may not be a change that can be incorporated within the price along the way. So a good commission process will involve getting good high quality images to work from or perhaps even a sitting or just agreement over uh, exactly what the subject matter is and the artist might get their own images if it's a um, an area or a, or a uh, you know for example a, a building or a landscape or a view that you particularly want want done of an area or to commemorate something um, you'll want to obviously have that timeline uh, understood between you because if it's a gift, for example, for a birthday, you don't want to be giving it a week after the birthday. That kind of ruins the surprise um, or the impact of it. And then, you know, you want to make sure that you understand exactly what's going to happen, what is going to be painted in the medium, um, how big it's going to be. Uh, you usually get to make sure you have a good discussion about colour palette, um, where it's going to be. A great idea is to be able to get a photo of where the piece of art is going to hang so the artist has a good understanding of the amount of light in that room, where the light comes from in that room to make kind of a sense of the of the uh, how the image is likely to look. Sometimes you can get a mock-up worked up um, where if you have a good image of the room, the artist can actually kind of say, well, here's my mock-up, here's where it would go, even if it's just a photo, they might have a bit of manipulation on it. And that way you both really understand what's requested and what's being looked for. Uh, if you can get all of these things put in place, um, then you should have a very good experience with your commissioned artwork and you should find that you can get it done for a similar sort of price um, to the price that an artist might be producing their, um, their other artwork for on their website because as long as all of that understanding is built in, there shouldn't be scope creep, there shouldn't be misunderstandings and everything can be done uh, and of course, an artist is delighted to be able to produce a piece of artwork that actually somebody wants. It's a collaboration, but you've got to remember your rules. So 
you've got the ideas, you've got what you want, you've got the discussion, um, the artist should ask the right questions about it, and then of course you want to make sure that you actually get that artist's interpretation of what's been described, otherwise it's not going to look like the rest of the things that they do, and ultimately it's not going to be as good uh, as that artist could produce for you. I hope that makes sense to you, I uh, hope that's been useful, and um, if you want to uh, learn any more about commissioned art or other um, practices, in art, uh, then please uh, keep in touch with this channel and come to my website, which is Billy Art. So look forward to seeing you there. Thanks very much.